question number one. What about some recommended reading on the first part of minimalism? I think that a lot of the books that helped me personally were not necessarily having to do with minimalism specifically as a subject. Um, there's this book called The Power of Habit by James Duhigg, which I remember making an impact. Um, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Would you consider yourself an essentialist? I guess so. It, it all depends what your definitions of minimalism and essentialism and simple living and etc. are. I adopted the word minimalism for myself because it was really the first one that I knew of and it fit me. And I think I just held on to it because I've had it for so long <laughs> that it, it still feels comfortable. Uh, if someone told me I was an essentialist, I wouldn't say, no, you're wrong, I'm not. How to deal with the feeling of thinking and feeling like you still have stuff to declutter. Uh, example, there is this shirt that is green with math signs and I love it, but it looks so bad on my body and I don't know what to do because I don't use it, but I love how it looks and it has a lot to do with my personality. I think that you could find different uses for an item like a t-shirt. So you could make it into a pillowcase. You could cut it and put it in a frame and hang it on your wall. You could just wear it as a pajama shirt. You know, you don't need to necessarily wear it as a t-shirt out in public if you don't feel confident in it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not giving you joy, adding value to your life. You know, it doesn't mean that you need to get rid of it if you're not uh, willing to go out in public in it. Actually, I have one of my own. One minute. Ta-da! I have this sweatshirt. Noah's Ark is a water park in uh, Wisconsin that I went to. This is probably from before I was even a teenager. And it was big on me, now it fits me and there's paint and chocolate and uh, one of the sleeves is ripped, but I wear it around the house. I wear it to sleep and it still is so soft and there's no reason for me to get rid of it yet until I completely destroy it. But I'm definitely not like going out on the town in this sweatshirt. What made you decide to become a minimalist? It really started when I graduated high school and was moving away to college and I realized that I had a lot of stuff in my room and I had to kind of figure out what I wanted to bring with me and then I ended up donating a lot of stuff. This was like 2010, so that was 10 years ago. Um, I didn't really, I, I wouldn't say I decided to become a minimalist. The ideas just resonated with me and at that point in time especially, um, it helped me in what I was trying to do. Did that answer the question? What is your story and reason for starting this journey? Yeah, flexibility, um, moving around, trying different ways of living too, experimenting. I'm all about that, experimentation. A lot of questions about my clothes. <laughs> What's the benefit of a minimalist color palette in your living space and appearance? Um, I wouldn't say I have a minimalist color palette in my living space. My furniture, a lot of it is hand-me-down or it's cheap furniture that I've gotten from Craigslist. Um, and so that's just kind of happenstance. I chose black because I sweat a lot and because I spill stuff on myself. And uh, black is the color that hides all of that. Plus black just looks cool, so. If I were black, even if I'm like stressed out and sweaty and I spilled coffee all over myself, I still look like I have my life together. How did you find the perfect black t-shirt for you? Uh, my perfect black t-shirt happened to be just a t-shirt that I bought one time on a whim because I wanted a loose neck black t-shirt and then it ended up being my favorite shirt. So every time I do laundry, it would be the first shirt that I would reach for. And then for the rest of the week after it was dirtied, I would have to wear my other shirts and I would always be sad that I didn't have that shirt to wear. And then one day I had this realization that if I just had eight of those t-shirts, I could wear it every day and I would be able to wear my favorite shirt every day, the shirt that made me feel confident and that hid my sweat and my spill stains and was a great material. It's got a little bit of a, of a heathered weave to it and it's actually organic cotton and it's, it's my favorite shirt, gotta say. 
Yes, but where did you get those pants from? Pants are actually something that I still have not found the perfect pair. Although these ones that I'm wearing, these, they're uh, nudie jeans, organic cotton, pretty much my favorite at this point. I still have some complaints about them, but even since I started making videos, I've worn pants from Prana and Patagonia and Lululemon and a different pair of nudie jeans pants. And this is what I'm at now. Um, oh, and Carhartt. And I still have not found the pair that I love as much as I love this t-shirt. So that's still kind of a work in progress. I think that you should try something out for a couple of months, really, before you can determine what you don't like about it and what you're trying to find in a new pair of pants before you decide that you wanna to switch to something else. That's just my personal opinion. Try to stick with it, see what's wrong with it, and try to find something that solves that problem. How do you keep your digital life minimal? And how can I minimalism of my thoughts? Um, Digital life minimal. I actually don't have any social media accounts except for YouTube. And I only really go on YouTube mm, twice a week, maybe. I used to have more social media and I would follow people I knew and people I didn't know and brands. And I really didn't like being advertised to. And it just was very overwhelming. And I realized that a lot of my free time was getting sucked up by me consuming other people's creations instead of me spending my free time creating things. Once in a while I have the thought that like, oh maybe I'll try a Instagram page again, or I'll have a concept for a certain Instagram page or a blog, and I'll think, oh, I should, I should start that up, but I haven't. I haven't <laughs> gotten to it. So I guess I don't want it that much. I'll let you guys know if I ever get any other social media, I'll let you know, don't worry. I will let you know, but at this point in time, yeah, this is it, this is all I got. Minimalism of my thoughts, I, I don't know, man. Try meditation. Ingrid, you were very kind, thank you. Um, their question is, do you think that when individual minimalists come together, it might lead to a more minimalist public spaces and systems? How would it look like? Uh, I have been thinking about that a little bit recently. I don't think it's necessarily people who um, call themselves minimalists, but just people who are very interested in uh, community building, um, whether it's in your neighborhood. So sometimes there are neighborhood coalitions or councils or groups uh, that focus on cleanup projects or local park rehabilitations. Um, there's a lot of greenery projects, uh, local gardens, but then there's also murals and artworks that occur when uh, people come together to build communities. I don't think it necessarily has to do with minimalism, but it's pretty fascinating. Actually, there's, there's a, a movement now for old malls to be turned into food courts. I forget what exactly they're called, but it's basically like the food court in a mall but the entire mall is the food court. And you can go there with your friends and your family and all share a meal together, but eat from different little shops. I'll put a link in the descri description. That was a bad, that was a bad, uh, uh, I can't talk today. That was link in the description to this community food thing. It's pretty cool. A lot of people asking about my van. Um, so I haven't, done anything to the van <laughs> since last September. I still have the van. I'm going to work on the van. Actually, after I finish recording this, I'm going to start working on it again. Really what happened is that it got cold. <laughs> I, live, I live in the Northeast and right around uh, September is when I moved into this apartment and I was just sick of the van because I had been living in it for six months and working on it and it was just overwhelming at that point and I wanted to be in an air-conditioned apartment so I got it and then I said okay I'm gonna give myself a month to just kind of chill and me and Lump are going to spend a little time apart but then by the time I was ready to start working on it again and I was inspired again to, to get some um, new creations going with it it got really cold outside. So probably I'm thinking by the end of April, I'll do the last build video and give you guys a full tour of what happened with it. 
but it's still gonna be kind of a work in progress in terms of I want to like add some some artwork to it. I think I might paint. I've always wanted to learn rose mauling. It's a Norwegian folk art. And so I think I might add some rose mauling to the van. It's gonna be a struggle. I've never done it before. So it's gonna be interesting. I hope I don't mess it up. How did you decide what things to bring back into your life? And also what does post-minimalism look like for you? Um, I have brought a few things back into my life. I know that when I did my uh, extreme minimalist experience last year and put everything in a storage container, there were a couple of things that I wanted during that month that I brought in back immediately. Um, one of those was a uh, my V60 coffee filter system. I have been using it ever since and I have been completely grateful to have it back. What does post-minimalism look like for you? I don't know, still figuring it out. I think it's it's bringing um, activities back into my life and I still am figuring out what those activities are. What do I wanna spend my time doing? Some people on my post-minimalism uh, video, the end of minimalism video that I posted, they were saying like, oh, now she's gonna put color in her wardrobe and she's gonna bring back a bunch of furniture into her apartment. That's not what I mean at all. That's not what I meant. I do not really have intentions of increasing the quantity of objects in my life. That is not what I mean. I want to increase the activities that bring me joy and fill my life with things that are not physical objects. I hope that was clear to those of you who were confused. It'd be awesome to see how much he's willing to do now. Ooh, time. Hmm. Hmm. So I posted a video last week showing you really how much cleaning I do every week. Sometimes it's more than that, sometimes it's less than that, but it's usually just a couple of hours and I do it on the weekend. On weekdays, I pretty much wake up and do like a simple morning routine and then I go to work. That pretty much takes up all of my weekday time. When I come home, I go to the gym or I'll watch a movie and relax. And on weekends, I spend one day doing this pretty much or I might travel around. I live by a couple of big cities, so sometimes I'll go to the cities, um, I'll visit people, hang out with friends or I will, what else do I do? I like going to coffee shops and I spend a lot of time on the internet and I like reading and yeah, it's a pretty simple life, you know? You spend your time with people and you spend your time with increasing your skills and you work because you gotta feed yourself and pay your rent. Nothing too crazy. <laughs> People asking questions about my job. I work as an industrial designer. I work for a company and everything I do for them is owned by them. It, it's all like proprietary stuff. So no, I can't talk about it. I apologize for that. Um, instead, you get to enjoy these creations that I make for you on YouTube. But no, I can't really share what I do at my job or any other information about that really. So uh, I appreciate you respecting my privacy on that. And I uh, would love to share more about how I make these videos if you're interested in that. Oh my gosh, I didn't even mean to segue into this, but the next one's asking about my video kit. I actually, I'm gonna make a video soon talking about what I use to, what all of this is to make my videos. Um, and it is evolving and I am trying to learn how to, to improve that. What made you always decide to finish with a wink and a click and then show us how to do the click? I honestly didn't decide to do it. I just did it on the first video because I didn't know how to end it. And then I just kept doing it on all of my other videos. I didn't really want to have any kind of like introduction or uh, theme song or anything on these because I really like getting to the point of the video uh, and keeping it short and sweet. But that's an easy way to do a little sign off and add a little bit of uh, my 
I don't know, quirkiness, sense of humor to it. If you guys want to learn how to do it, show us, show us how to do the click. Okay, so you know when you wink, your cheek kind of goes up, at least my cheek goes up. At the same time that my cheek goes up, I put my mouth like that. And uh, it's the same motion as going, like you kind of suck your tongue to the roof of your mouth to do that. But when you make the click sound, you suck your tongue to, <laughs> it sounds gross. Suck your tongue to that side of your teeth and just kind of like release the, the suction of it. That sounds so gross. But when it all comes together, it makes a little click sound. And I'm gonna do it now because this video is over. So till next time. <laughs>